Einstein Copilot, sorry, I mean Tableau agents are a new feature in Tableau 24.2. Now, there's a lot to cover in this. First, I'll cover the features, then I'll cover the naming. Let's get stuck in. So we're here in Tableau Cloud. This feature is only available in web authoring. That's why we're starting here. If we go to the new option, go to workbook, um, it loads up this view. We connect to our data. For this one, I'm going to connect to my Tableau Pulse demo data set. Let's go ahead and select that, hit connect, and boom, we're inside of the authoring experience inside of Tableau Cloud. Um, also, this feature is only available in Tableau Cloud. It's not coming to Tableau Server before someone asks. Now, you can open up Einstein Copilot or Tableau Agent in two places. The first place is over here on the right-hand side. You can see by clicking that icon, it opens up the pane, and you're pretty much good to go. As soon as you select got it, it opens up that bottom pane here on the on the bottom. Um, I kind of wish it was at the top, and it's kind of weird. You click up here for the icon, and then you get sent down all the way here for this thing. Um, I think you can break UX a little bit. I know ChatGPT and everything sort of has this bottom up sort of window. I find that frustrating. I think you can be a bit innovative. If the icon's there, put the text box here and just have have the feed updating below. That's fine. I can always read down, but moving my cursor down, a anyway, bit, bit of a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, the other way you can enable this is if you go into this uh, calculated field option and you click on the icon, it also opens up this pane, but it does something slightly different. So um, let's actually get into it. Maybe there's a little clue there. You can see it's generated something. Let's get into what you can do with this capability. So the first thing I'll do is I'll highlight that this, this chat GPT window, this Einstein Copilot window is contextual to each sheet. So the only way I found of clearing this view is to actually start a new sheet. When you start a new sheet, it starts a new conversation with Einstein Copilot, and there you have the context. So it's view specific or sheet specific in this exact sense. A view in Tableau is something slightly different. A sheet is exactly what we're talking about here, and that's what we're looking at. So it's sheet specific. What can you do with it? Well, the first thing you can do is you can click on suggestions and it analyzes your data set and comes back at you with some questions you can ask. If you're stuck, you don't know where to start, you can ask it some questions. When you click on those questions, it goes ahead and generates the chart. Let's see what it builds, and let's see how complex it is. Great, so we've got month of order date, sales forecast, and sales. Um, so it's built a line chart very easy. It's used a dual axis as well. Very complicated trick. Now, I will just take a slight tangent here and highlight that this, this is already possible in Tableau of many, many years ago. And it's called something called Show Me. Show Me can do this exact same chart. Let's just go ahead and show you how. The only difference with Show Me is you need to pick the field. So let's say you want to select order date, I'll hold sales and I'll hold sales forecast. And then you go to the top right, select Show Me. And you need to be understanding of how Show Me works here. For me to see a dual axis, I actually have to click this exact icon here. So let's go ahead and click that. And you'll see we get this. Now, the difference here is used year of order date, but with one small change, I can actually go ahead and change this to month of order day. And that creates pretty much exactly the same thing as we've just seen. So if we go over here, uh, that's exactly the same chart. So the only real difference here is that the year of order day is a default field that I actually selected. So when you select order day, by default, it'll pick year, but you can go ahead and change that manually. So show me could already do some of the things we're asking. And I think it gives you a much clearer visual of what's going on, which made me wonder, like, why isn't this just part of Shimmy? Why aren't all the Einstein Copilot Tableau agent chart building things just in Shomi with a much, much more interesting experience? It would be fascinating if, as you hovered over these different charts, Tableau was sort of changing the charts in front of you, showing you how they work. And you can get a sense of how they're built. You know, really bring this canvas to life, really show people how to use the product. But nonetheless, um, I just want to sort of touch on that just to, just to pull to the surface that what's really happening here is that you're typing text into a window and it's using the rest of Tableau, some of the things we've already uh, talked about to do what Show Me was already able to do. That capability has existed. The difference is um, the instruction and how it's being delivered to the product. Okay, now... That's not to simplify this because you know Einstein Copilot can go a lot, lot further. If I go back to my sheet two where we had a context already running, you can ask follow on questions. For example, you can say, hey, can you filter this to, let's say 2022 and 2023. Now I've thrown a bit of a span. I've asked for two separate things using an AND clause in there. 
what I should see is two years worth of data. Let's see what it does. Remember, it's still a dual axis, still keeping the context of what's going on. And it says, I'm having trouble with that. Could you try phrasing your request another way? I don't think I could. <laughs> I think that is the simplest, simplest way to do it. And that shows an example of what's going on here with this tool. It's AI. It's going to really struggle. That to me was a simple question. And uh, let's say filter this to 2022 instead. This sh it should get. Now, I think the and clause is what confused it there. And I think it, it was struggling to understand that I just want to see both of those two things. Um, it's still having trouble. Okay. Now this has worked in the past. Um, let's say filter this to um, uh, South region. There you go. I've asked it for a uh, value inside of dimension. So there's a region field and okay. It's just not having any luck with me at the moment. Let me um let me let me try a new session in a new window. So let's go ahead, let's go do this. Now because we built this chart ourselves, we could actually carry on. So let's 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 start a new window here and say filter this to 2022. Hit enter. Let's see if it has any luck. Maybe Tableau Cloud has decided to go to sleep right now as I'm recording this very late in the evening. I'm talking to Phil the air. Come on, you're going to work. I believe in you. I have faith. Yes, it worked. Okay, <laughs> month of order date 2022. You can see that is there. Let's try something else. Let's say add 2023 to this too. Let's be very specific about that. So does it extend the filter to include 2023? Can it do that? Let's see. Now, and for the record, this is not some sort of uh, AI test, whatever. And what I'm trying to understand is, look, how much natural language could this understand that analysts would use? And I think, you know, filtering is pretty standard. I think Tableau needs to iron out all of these sort of issues because I know it can do this. It's just it's just it's just struggling at this exact moment in time. That's not to take away from the feature. I think it's important to understand that sometimes these things work and sometimes they don't. Let's dig into that a little bit more so you can understand uh, what I mean by that now. <clears throat> The next thing you can do is you can ask it to help you with calculations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to help me with this calculation. Now, I've specifically written this in a way that I think an analyst would write it, but I know it's not going to get it right because of the way it's written to highlight an example. So um, can you write a calculation for me to find the average sales per customer by region? Now, the reason I've written it like that is because an analyst would get that request and paste it in and write it exactly like that. But here's the catch with this question. Average sales per customer by region is not a metric. It's a chart. I've actually described a chart and here's how to pass this out. Average sales per customer, that's the metric, by region is the dimension that I want to see this by. So what it will do here is I've thrown a dimension in that it can see. And what it's probably going to do is write a calculation to include the region when the region is just a context for the chart. So let's see if this, this happens. And you can see that in writing calculations, what it should do is open up the calculation window, name the calculation, which is has correctly done. Uh, it's actually given it nice uh, camel case naming there. And then you can see it has actually fallen for that pitfall there. Um, the by region bit shouldn't be part of this because the by region is basically what we're going to put as a dimension in the rows. So if we were to fix this, we can go ahead and do this. And this will lead me to the next thing it can do. So let's go ahead and fix this. Let's remove this average from there. Let's remove that from there. Let's remove region because we don't need it as part of our LOD. If you're not familiar with LODs, go check out my videos. Go check out SQL Bell's videos. They're great. Uh, if we hit apply, We've got our calculation there. We've used it to help us do this. Now, if I highlight this and I say, look, OK, uh, can you help me explain this calculation? Calculation. You can ask it uh, to understand the calculation. Now, I type that in there in the chat window just to show you that it can look at the chat window, that sort of calculation window whilst you're working. So this calculation finds the average sales for each customer. It does this by fixing the calculation, the customer name level meaning it calculates the average sales for each individual customer, which is perfect. Now, it's not actually the average sales. It's talking in metric terminology, but what it actually does is it calculates the average value of items in a customer's whole a record base. So if a customer has had multiple orders, it will go in and find the average value of all the items that are in that record because this data source is at a granularity. It is not just orders. It's actually products in an order, and you can buy multiple products 
of the same type in one order, hence that detail. So we've got that metric uh, there now created. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and put it in and we'll get our number and <laughs> Tableau's gone and summed it up. But what we can do just to make this chart be more correct is put a customer name. And I think what we'll do is we'll I put that in a really bad place. I should have put it there. <laughs> Apologies. And then what we can do is rotate this 90 degrees and then go look at see what the highest value is. Let's let's keep uh, Mitch. Let's keep Mitch in this data set. There's Mitch. Um, we'll go ahead and put the value on label. So, you know, I'm just playing around with this. I'm going to put region. Uh, and this is what I was saying earlier. Look, by region. So customer by region is basically what the question was. And um, you see, it's actually the same value. And that's because, well, my LOD is written at the customer level. So if I wanted to make this work, then what I should have asked is, look, can you calculate the average sales per customer region combination, basically? So you're, 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 you're pairing customer and region to create this the sort of context. We can get this correct in our LOD going in here, select edit and actually adding this back. So fix that the customer region level and uh, let's go ahead and add that calculate the average sales if you hit apply you'll see that number now changes to reflect that so now this is working that's how you debug this calculation to make sure it's doing the right thing if you want to you can even go as far as going into the record to find out what's going on at a summary level but also looking at the full data now the full data will only show you what's actually available in the um, data set in the current moment but you can go ahead and show additional fields if you wanted to if you can bring in, uh, let's say, the product name, you can see that these are two different products. They're not the same product. Um, you can go look at the quantity. There's seven of that. There's three of this one. So there's a little bit of, um, you know, I think investigation you have to do with all of these calculations, regardless of whether it's written them or not. The charts are sort of easy to see if it's done them correctly, but the calculations, I think you do have to uh, start writing. them. Anyway, that is how it works. There's a whole bunch of other things to cover, but look, if you want to understand the full context of this, um, there is good documentation of this, and I'll come back to why it's still called an unsigned copilot here in a second, but uh, nonetheless, um, you've got all the things it can build, all the charts it can build, the way the data works with Einstein, Einstein Trust Layer, the different types of file formats that it can read, um, how to launch it, basically a lot of the things I've covered in this video, along with I think it has a tips section here at the bottom that gives you really good ideas for the prompt you're going to type so you can make sure it's really, really tight, uh, as well as some unsupported features, things it can't do just yet. Um, and then there's also an FAQ, which is kind of nice. So um, it kind of goes into some of the some of the things your colleagues or you know people in your business might might ask. Um, it's compliance, it's sort of capability, how it works, who the LLM providers are. All of that is nicely detailed, which leads me to, I guess, the final bit, which is <clears throat> let's talk a bit about the branding of this. Now, this is called Tableau Agents as a result of Dreamforce and Dreamforce um, in that announcement just now two weeks ago, they came out with this idea of something called Agent Force. And so this idea that AI is, you know, fine, co-pilots are fine, but actually we need to go to the next level where we have autonomous AI powered agents doing things, exercising demands and requests based on user workflows on people's behalf, essentially amplifying the effort that people put into their daily jobs. And this is great, but the, the fundamental problem with this is that <laughs> the brand change happened faster than pretty much the release of Einstein Copilot. So Einstein Copilot came out in 24.2. It had been around in beta for a little bit longer. And then literally within... I'd say a month and a half, it changed branding to Tableau Agents. And you can see throughout this whole video, there's bits where it's still called Copilot, there's bits where it's called Tableau Agent. And that's that's something that just needs to get ironed out because I think people will search for this, they'll, they'll find Copilot a lot. And Tableau have talked about Einstein in so many different contexts. So you will no doubt for the rest of the end of time find you know conversations about Einstein that could be mistaken for this. Anyway, the other thing is, I think agents are really bad name for this. I'm sorry to say this, but you know, I get the concept of agents within Salesforce. I totally get that because in Salesforce, that kind of ecosystem, a lot of the workflows in Salesforce itself do speak to this sort of idea of agents. You know, um, the, a lot of the demos they gave suggest you might call in for a service desk and have an agent 
check inventory and do a bunch of things. There's a level of autonomy that is expected to complete that workflow. But when you're in Tableau in the web authoring experience, you're supposed to be a wingman or wingwoman of me, the author. You're not supposed to be some autonomous thing going off and doing stuff in the background. There is no agent-like capability in what I've just shown you. It's more of an actual co-pilot. And to me, that's sort of the irony. I don't know why Tableau couldn't have gone down the route to say, look, we get agent force, we get agents, but there is a world, uh, hear me out, there is a world where agents and co-pilots can coexist. An agent in Tableau to me would be something that goes out and picks up a bunch of metrics that it thinks you need to look at based on activity it's learned from you, behaviors it's learned from you, and surfaces them to you with some sort of explanation and narrative. It's a bit like um, Google's Notebook LLM, where you can give it a script, you can give it a bunch of audio, a bunch of text, and it will create a podcast based on that. That to me is more of an agent, you know, surfacing things that it thinks are important for you based on your interest, helping you. A co-pilot helps you build things faster, helps direct you, helps you um, empower you. And that's, that to me is a, such a much better branding. I know Salesforce wanted to move away from this in Microsoft co-pilot, whatever thing, but I still think like, well, if you're going to do that, you really do need to sort of understand what that word means. And I think if you go and Google and search, you know, agent versus, um, you know, co-pilot, you'll find lots of good discussions about these. And, and everyone's going towards this world of agents in the AI space. But I do think, you know, if you look at developers, if you look at a lot of people who are writing code with uh, ChatGPT, it's much, much more of a co-pilot. You're still in charge. You're still driving. You saw that I had to, at times, interrogate what the AI had done <laughs> correct it and that is very much what a pilot does versus a co-pilot right it's kind of our irony in that the experience i showed you was more of a co-pilot pilot experience than it was an agent because if if it's an agent and all of that stuff happened autonomously you'd end up with a whole you know bunch of junk on tableau server tableau cloud anyway it won't come on tableau server so i don't know why i mentioned that but anyway i think that's my two piece on that I just think this wasn't, it's just something not right. And, you know, it goes even further because, I don't know, this is sort of, not that I'm a journalist or anything, but it feels like there's a bit of a control find replace on Tableau Agent. Like everything that was previously called Einstein Copilot has been rebranded to just be called Tableau Agent everywhere. Like agents weren't, didn't exist in April 2024. Uh, and here they are talking about it, right? And even if you go into the um, article from back then, um, you'll see they've gone and done Tableau Agent for me, Einstein Copilot, basically on a bunch of articles. They've gone and done a whole sweep and audit and sort of changed things. Um, but a lot of the, you know, marketing, uh, unfortunately for this, is still talking about Einstein Copilot. Like if you open this up, you can see it's still got Einstein in there. Um, now Einstein will remain as the branding because Einstein is sort of the AI machine learning brand within Salesforce. Um, Tableau Einstein is a product. Einstein is in Salesforce. Einstein Copilot was like co oh, just, uh, Salesforce branding, man. It's just so bad. It changes faster than they can build a product, which is sort of <laughs> ironic. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I think I've said enough about this. We've been going for nearly 20 minutes. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know what you think you're going to be doing with Einstein Copilot. I'm really intrigued to see where this is going. And I think I have to call out, this is just version one. There are other co-pilots in Tableau Prep. There's other co-pilots in Data Lineage. So I'll make separate videos on that to show you sort of how they work and what you can do with them. But hey, it's the first video in a while. Um, I just wanted to cover this because it's something that I know is fairly topical. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to know um, what you think of this. Are you going to use it? Don't forget, you need Tableau Plus in order to use this as well. So I do think the user base for this will be limited at first pass. Um, until everyone catches up with the availability and they start to see some actual value coming from this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.